So let me begin with a question. What percentage do you think the cost of college textbooks have risen since the late 1970s? Would you guess 50%? 100%? 300%? Well, whatever your answer is, hold on and we'll come right back to it. My name is Jacob Jenkins. I'm a faculty member here in the communication program at CI. And on behalf of my colleague, Jamie Hannons, who's a faculty member in nursing, we'd like to welcome you to the first workshop on OpenCI. OpenCI is part of the CSU-wide Affordable Learning Solutions Initiative, or ALS, an initiative that's aimed at helping students save money on their college textbooks. Jamie Hannons and I are your official campus coordinators for ALS here on CI's campus. As you can see from the screen in front of you, we'll begin by telling you a little bit about why OpenCI matters and why we think you should get involved. Then we'll tell you briefly about what OpenCI and ALS are, and then we'll conclude by spending most of our time discussing how. How you can get involved and how we can support your efforts to do that. So if we begin with why, that brings us back to that opening question of what percentage you think the price of college textbooks have risen since the late 1970s. Do you remember your answer? Did you guess 50%? 100%? 500%? Well, what if I told you the cost of college textbooks have risen over 1,000% 1, since 1977? 1,044% to be exact. In addition, the cost of college textbooks rose three times the rate of inflation throughout the 1980s and four times the rate of inflation during the 1990s. Today, the average college textbook costs over $100 and students on average spend more than $1,200 on textbooks and supplies alone each year. These statistics remind me of a silly image I saw years ago. You guys have probably saw this before, right? And they also remind me of a video I saw recently that specifically outlined the rising cost of textbooks since 1998. If you're still not convinced, here are a few testimonies from actual CI students. As you can read for yourself, Kelly P. talks about the stress she felt waiting on her paycheck so that she could buy her textbooks before the first day of class. I especially think the second part of her quote is interesting where she says, I understand publishers need to make money, but I feel they do it at the expense of those who are trying to afford an education, who are already on a tight budget. Similarly, Maya S. tells a story about when she was forced to decide between buying her college textbooks or paying for the registration on her car. As you can see for yourself, her decision to buy her college textbooks actually led to her being pulled over and receiving her first ticket for an expired registration. Needless to say, all of this can lead to a number of hindrances for today's college student. Increased stress during college, increased debt following college, or perhaps worst of all, the decision to avoid college altogether. Each of these realities are also more pronounced among certain populations, first-generation students, underrepresented populations, students of lower economic status, a reality that seems especially relevant to you and I here at CI, seeing as we're a Hispanic-serving institution with a large population of first-generation students. Now that we've talked about why this matters and why we think you should be involved in OpenCI, let's talk briefly about what it is. In brief, OpenCI is CI's branch of the larger CSU initiative, Affordable Learning Solutions. As I mentioned before, ALS is an effort to help save students money on their college textbooks. ALS is driven by three key elements, choice, affordability, and accessibility. Choice refers to your ability as a faculty member to choose the highest quality materials that you feel best serve your students' needs. Meanwhile, affordability and accessibility refer to the student's ability to both afford and have access to a high quality education. As your campus coordinators for ALS here on CIS campus, Jamie and I's primary responsibility could be summarized in one word, and that's support. We're here to coordinate ALS's efforts on campus through OpenCI by supporting you throughout the process in whatever way we can. To explain what I mean by that, let's talk about how. How you can get involved and how specifically we can offer that support. I see there as being six primary ways that we can help support you through OpenCI. 
The first is workshops not unlike this one. In addition, Jamie and I will be hosting monthly workshops throughout the coming semester. Keep your eye out for those announcements as they can be a convenient opportunity for you to come into the Fit Lab in order to meet with us, troubleshoot, ask any questions you might have, and so on. The second type of support we can offer is to help you find open education resources, or OERs, for your own classroom. Not only can we point you to lists like this, which offer a wide collection of OERs that you can search for yourself, but we're also in the process of building specific lists of OERs for each program on campus. Here's a specific example of one of those lists for the communication program. As you can see, this 46-page single-space document offers hundreds of free online textbooks for consideration. The document is organized by class with the idea being that individual faculty members can go to the list, search for the class they're teaching, and be met with two, four, six, maybe more than a dozen free online OER options. Each option includes the title of the textbook, the cost for the students, which range from zero to sometimes seven, eight dollars, as well as a live link so that the faculty member can go directly to the resource to review it for themselves and make a decision. This is only one example of the list we've worked to create over the last few months, but there are a few more lists for other programs that have already been uploaded to our OpenCI website, and we hope to continue doing the same for other programs in the coming weeks and months. In addition to offering workshops and resources, we're also here to offer support through curation services. In this way, we can help you to create a variety of resources for your specific classroom. If there isn't a single e-textbook out there that meets all of your needs, then you might be interested in gathering together a mixture of journal articles and book chapters, web pages, databases, columns, blogs, you name it. Those resources can then be curated on your current Blackboard site or even through a CI Keys website. As you probably know, CI Keys is a relatively new initiative here on campus, and it allows faculty to build their own websites from the ground up. Although far from a perfect example, here's a CI Keys website I recently created for my intercultural class to London last summer. In addition to an about page that offers an overview of the course and even information about me, which was mostly tailored toward the parents and family members of students who were going abroad, it also has a blog which I had students use to journal while we were abroad, as well as a photo bucket which students uploaded to while we were still in London. For me, using CI Keys in this way had a number of positive implications. It allowed students to read and cross-comment on one another's blog posts and also helped family members back home to stay in touch with what we were doing by seeing and reading about our day-to-day -day activities. Again, although far from a perfect example, I think you can see how much these websites can be customized and you can imagine how it could be used to help curate your resources with each link being a different unit or section or chapter or topic, whatever works best for you. Which brings us to the fifth way which we can offer you support through OpenCI, our student assistant. This semester we have a student assistant named Kelly Prather, who's a current senior here at CI, who can also help you with everything we've mentioned so far. She can help you to find additional resources or to curate specific items that you want to use in your class, and she can also help you to build that CI Keys website, especially if you've never done it for yourself. Which brings us to the sixth and final way that we see ourselves as being able to offer you support, and that's through special consulting contracts. There are three different types of contracts that we'll refer to here as current, new, and collaborative. Let's talk about each in turn. Just as it might sound, current refers to faculty who are currently using ARs in their classroom to save students at least 30%. If this applies to you, the three deliverables are a brief data questionnaire, which includes a specific course name and section number, the number of students, the dollar amount you're able to save them by using OERs, etc. And the second two deliverables are a reporting video and a promotional video. As you can see, the reporting video is approximately three to five minutes and it reports out on your experience, whereas a promotional video is seen as a brief 20 second blurb that we could be used to highlight your experience to others and perhaps even recruit additional faculty. Finally, this special consulting contract comes with a $500 financial incentive. If you're not currently using OERs but would like to in your classroom, then the second option most likely applies to you. This option is aimed at new faculty who are redesigning a course to use OERs, again, in a way that saves their students at least 30% on textbooks. The deliverables are exactly the same. In the end, you'll need to complete a data questionnaire and create a reporting video as well as a promotional video. With this option, however, in order to reward you for the time it takes to redesign a class in such a way, we're offering an incentive of $1,500, as well as an extra $250 for each additional section. For example, if you taught four sections of, say, public speaking, you would receive the base $1,500 plus $250 for each of those three additional sections, coming to a grand total of $2,250. 
And one final incentive that's tied to this consulting contract includes $250 for anyone who adopts someone else's OER redesign. In other words, if you were to take the time to find resources and redesign a class using resources that save your students at least 30%, and then a colleague who teaches a different section of the same class adopts your changes, he or she will receive $250 as a reward for saving his or her students that money. The third type of special consulting contract is collaborative. We really see this type of redesign on a programmatic level. We envision multiple faculty coming together with his or her chair as well as us, the campus coordinators, to redesign a class which has multiple sections offered each semester. For that reason, in order to meet this criteria, the redesign must affect at least five sections total. So for a class like public speaking that has eight sections each semester, three faculty that teach, say, two sections each, could come together in cooperation with the chair and we the campus coordinators and redesign the class using OERs for six sections total. Yet again, the deliverables are the same, a data questionnaire outlining the specifics and the savings that was created, as well as two videos. But here, because the positive impact on the students is so great, we're actually able to offer an entire course release or the worth of a course release to be divided among the faculty as they see fit. So there you have it. I'm sure you have a number of questions, so here's a brief one-minute video that summarizes the way OERs can help save your students money, and following that, we'll take a few moments to see if you have any questions. So if you're listening to this at home, we obviously can't answer any of your questions live, but if any thoughts or concerns come to mind, please feel free to reach out to Jamie and I, your campus coordinators for OpenCI here on campus. Here are our names and our email addresses, and you can also keep a lookout for those monthly workshops that will be coming up later this semester. So that tells you a little bit about why we think you should be interested in OpenCI, what exactly OpenCI and ALS are and most importantly, how you can get involved and how we can support you in your efforts. I hope this workshop has been helpful, and I hope that together now we can chip away at those numbers we started this presentation with, especially that 1,044% number, in order to truly offer affordable learning solutions to our students through OpenCI.